The People's Democratic Party condemns President Buhari's administration, warning that the country is collapsing under his watch. And the unending quarry state registration fracas resurfaces as Minister of Information Lai Muhammad calls for the cancellation of the party's membership exercise and calls on the national leadership of the party to put in place a process that will ensure the conduct of a credible and fair exercise. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cohn. The People's Democratic Party PDP have lamented the rising sectional disagreement and violent conflicts in various parts of the country, which it said are being exacerbated by the insensitive, divisive and parochial approach to governance by the Buhari-led All Progressive Congress APC. The PDP, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Kola Lobodion, accused President Buhari of allegedly failing to effectively manage the country's economy, as well as the complex political and social nuances of the country. Well, joining us to debunk all of this is uh, political analyst Lester Wilcox and Francis Chilaka. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you. for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Francis. Um, this is what the PDP is saying. That this is not the first time that people have decried, you know, um, the way that Mr. President is leading the country. Several, pe several people have criticized Mr. President. But what are your thoughts on how the country has fared under Mr. President? Let's start from there. Ah, uh, well, everybody, everybody is feeling the same thing. Uh, what is going on in Nigeria today? It is not what we're bargaining for as the people when we demanded for the change in 2015. Um, so it's, it's nothing new. But um, I don't see a difference between PDP and APC. So each time PDP goes on that route of um, trying to throw swans, swans, and Mr. President, I don't sit back and I laugh, because it's still the same people cross-cutting from one party into another, you know. So, also we have a talk for a party that is not made up of the same old crop of politicians, then we will not take them out. So, whatever PDP is saying is not used by Julian, it is not when Julian are saying that the game is only. And so, I, I think right now, I don't have faith in PDP, so you're saying that this is a, 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 um, a, a case of the pot calling the kettle black because um, there are people who also have echoed or re-echoed what the PDP is saying. So are you agreeing um, that both of them are cut from the same cloth? Well, that is the truth. That's the truth. Uh, both of them are in the same field. If, if tomorrow PDP takes power, we know what we know what happened to come down. Um Cecilia's of PDP. Because you know we keep saying no, uh, throw things under the carpet. That doesn't seem to have a nation. But you know, it, it, it's painful that those we make for as leaders have always ended up disappointing us. And it is only when they are no longer in power that they realize that there are certain things they ought to have done that they did it too. I'm going to take you on further, but uh, I think there's something wrong with your line. It's going in and out. So let me go to Alesta. Alesta, there have been concerns from the PDP and from several other people, but today we're focusing on the PDP. Uh, there have been concerns over rising sectional disagreements, um, violent conflicts in various parts of the country. Um, the PDP has said that these conflicts are being exacerbated uh, by the insensitivity of this government and the divisive nature and the stance in which this government has taken. What are your thoughts? Well, um, if not for your, for your session and the respect of your session, I have heard not to talk about the PDP in, and, their, and their rhetoric. Where since 2016 that they lost power at the center, uh, they've not been able to form a formidable uh, opposition to the current uh, administration. Rather, a lot of Daniel would just sit down somewhere, and um, when his head turned left, he scribbled something, that for me is at best laughable. 
and, uh, and, uh, and devoid of anything that is called sensible opposition. Um, there is no way um, a, a, a party like the PDP can have a voice or be the voice of uh, any meaningful Nigerian. Knowing fully well, the part they tried when they were in power in the, for 16 years, and uh, this is a part that cannot, cannot point to one, one developmental stride that they had for Nigeria in the last 16 years, they had switched. So, so, talking about uh, conflict, well, the PDP should know that they were the architects of every conflict that has existed in Nigeria. How do you for instance, there was nothing like militancy before the PDP came to power. There was nothing like Boko Haram before the PDP came to power. And so, these are, there was nothing like kidnapping. Sorry, let, me, let, me, no let me, let me, let me, let me, hold on. Are you saying that the PDP is the cause of this, or you're saying that these things happened under their watch? Because those are they two different the things. They are the originator. How do you mean by they're the originator? Because is it the it started, PDP that started, gave terrorist it started, arms? It started under their watch. It started. For instance, I just told you, you are from Kroos, you are from Akwaibom. I'm from River State. I'm not from Akwaibom. When go ahead. you are growing up, did you hear of things like militancy? No. It started in 2000 and when? When did it start? 2003. Did you hear anything about kidnapping in Nigeria? We know armed robbery. Do you know about kidnapping in Nigeria? Well, no, you know, I'm, you know I'm where I'm trying it to understand how the PDP no, were I, the I'm originators. Coming. It's just like you, it's just like the PDP. Accusing the present government of exacerbating what started under them. Look, let's talk, let's be honest about Nigeria. I am not here to defend any party, any member of any party. But there is more, there should be morality, even among thieves, there should be morality. A party like the PDP do not have the moral standing to ever accuse under God because this is a government, this is a party that when they host you at the center, they created most of the crisis that we have today, both How? economic. And so security, they created it. You're yet what to tell me, uh, Mr. Alexa, 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 before we move on, because I want us to move on, you're still making these allegations that they created. How did they create it? Can you explain to us how the PDP created these problems of it, it militancy in the Niger Delta and, did of course, did, did Boko Haram my, in the did North? Did you get East. my point? It started under their watch. And if they had been proactive enough as they accused the present administration, then they could have finished it because, I mean, book, let's say Boko Haram started 2009. No, sorry, 2008. God was 2009. Between 2008 to 2015, when this government took over, why were they able to wipe up Boko Haram? And it swelled up to the point that half of, half of Brunei State and Yobo State and Atamara State was under the full grip of Boko Haram. So if it is a situation where you want to accuse somebody, then what did you do? How did you Fester, you had your life to fester All and right. take root. All right. For instance, Let's... if you plant a tree, hold on, if you plant a tree, it's easier to uproot it when the tree is young. Then when it has grown tap root and become an oak tree, of course, you know what you need to uproot such a thing. And so that is why I say the, the PDP does not have the local standing or the moral pedestrian to speak on any issue as far as Nigeria is concerned. I will just ask you one more question and then go back to... Um... Francis. Now, you said that they do not have the local standing to um, ask these kind of questions or make these allegations. But let's backtrack to Mr. President's first tenure in office and his campaign. He campaigned on three different things. He campaigned on the economy. He talked about fighting corruption. He also said he was going to make sure that there is um, Boko Haram becomes a thing of the past. Now, here we are. We don't just have Boko Haram, but we have um, headers, uh, crisis, uh, and criminal, criminal headers, because, you know, they, we can't call them Fulani headers. But we have the headers crisis. We have Boko Haram. We have kidnapping. We have cattle rustling. We still have other issues, pockets of violence everywhere. And this is a government that promised us that they were going to deal with Boko Haram. They also promised us that they were going to give us a great economy. Um, here we are. We still haven't seen that great economy. Well, of course, we can also blame that on COVID. And then, of course, there's been um, this zero tolerance for corruption, but uh, we know what um, the corruption index is saying about Nigeria right now. So really, even if the PDP didn't do great, this is the reason why the APC 
apparently campaign to come into power. Can we really say that they have done what they promised they were going to do? If you have an open mind as a journalist, then you will really have answered the question I by yourself. You number question. one, uh, number one, if you talk about expansion of crime, every state have, have crime. Now, the, the, the levity with you, you said, you mentioned a lot of things, but it didn't mention bandit, uh, sorry, it, it, it didn't mention uh, militancy. At least that has, that has been taken care of. Now, the issue of the kidnapping, kidnapping well, is a new, it's a new novel in Nigeria that took, that, that, that replaced armed robbery. There was a time in this country that armed robbery held sway. But of course, criminals have discovered that they could no longer, uh, it's no longer uh, profitable to do robbery. They now do kidnapping. And of course, that is a security issue. Now, let me say this about campaign promises and this thing. Remember, during the Vietnam War, um, Lindy Johnson came up and said he was going to end the war. That's in America. That was in 1967. That he was going to end the war within six months of going to power. But of course, Lindy Johnson expanded the war. And then America suffered further, further casualties. You cannot eradicate a war like a, that has no borders. You can mitigate it and keep working on it. It took, I mean, up to today, Afghanistan is still boiling. And if we, if we understand what it takes, I'm not a military man, but I mean, from military history, which I have had for to read it, seems like a, 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 a military war. It took, it took uh, Sri Lanka 32 years to bring okay. the tiger to, 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 to the round table. All right. So it is, it's not going to take Nigeria that long. But the fact is, every country needs to support, rather than criticize, needs to support its government, its cities, its government, its military, in any war they are, they are, they are fighting. All right. They let, let, have in Nigeria. All right. We report the generative that, wants against the military. Let's, let's put a pin there. The let's put and a pin there. Let me, let's, let's, go to, let's go to Francis. We'll come back to you, Alasta. Uh, Francis, I'm going okay. to ask uh, the, almost the same question. <laughs> the PDP has said since 2015, the president and his administration um, has had the economy collapsing under it um, due to their failure to effectively manage the economy. Um, so, I, I mean, Alasta is saying, is making a case uh, in terms of security. Let's talk about the economy. How well has it fared under this administration so far? This is five years plus uh, and counting. Well, the 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 I don't think any right in Nigeria today would support this combination. In as much as we PDP has no justification to put on terms of this government. But the government itself seems to be moving without making any motion. Things are getting tough. Mine is getting quite unbearable for Nigeria. Francis, are you using and an are you using an earpiece? Because we really can't hear you. You sound you, your your audio is going and coming. Uh, is it possible for you to ditch the earpiece so we can hear you very well? We really can't hear you. I'm not I'm, I'm not using the earpiece. Okay, but we really can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that um, the economy as it is today is not in favor of anybody. Nobody's enjoying the Nigerian economy. It's a total failure on the part of this government in terms of economy recovery. We don't even know the economic drive of this government. Nobody knows the economic drive. Nobody knows what this government wants to do because every day the cost of people is going higher and higher. So how do you say that you're making progress when the people that you're supposed to work on are dying of hunger? You know, so the, the economy has not been fair. Businesses have suffered. Even though everybody now shifts everything to COVID-19. And all of that, but we know that even before COVID, businesses were already closing down. So the government needs to wake up. The government needs to think as if there is no boss. The government needs to begin to think in such a way as to create opportunity, jobs for the Nigerian people. The economy is not moving forward. That is the truth. So they don't need saying, "Oh, that the government has tried in this way." That way. The government has not tried because the government needs to. Come at this point. I tell Nigerians, this is our economic policy. 
This is what we can achieve in the next one year or six months. We don't have any kind of plan to know where this government is headed to as of now. Let me ask you another question. Now, the PDP in their statement referred to some anti-democratic and anti-people activities um, in the Buhari administration. As a, as a Nigerian, as a citizen, as an, an analyst, have you seen any uh, anti-people um, or anti-democratic activities under the Buhari administration? What could these anti-people or anti-democratic activities be, if there be any? Oh, well, you know that um, Nigerians, we have the right to protest. I think that is where PDP is, is um, heading to, that we have the right to, to, to protest if we don't like what is happening in governance. Moreover, we all know that democracy is government for the people, by the people, and of the people. Yes, it is true that the government is trying to stifle the Nigerian people from protesting, from speaking. But we must also say that this present government came into power by a protest. We know that they came into power by a protest. And at that time, nobody was arrested, nobody's account was frozen, nobody was, you know, maltreated by the police. So I think that, you know, this government needs to go back to its own drawing board to be able to tell Nigerians at what point we are free to protest. Because when there's going to be a protest, people don't just go to the street to protest. People protest when they feel that the policies of government is not favorable to them. It is their right to express it. So, but what you have found out is that, good, we know that what happened in October, uh, which they claim that the NSAF protest is jack. But the truth of the matter is that in every civilized society, it is the duty of the police to provide security for protesters. So where were the police when this protest were holding? to bring that policemen to arrest you must guide them you must protect them so that their views their anger their frustration can be aired and that is what pdp is saying that yes there is some undemocratic uh connotations being carried out by this government all right so this government needs to think twice and realize that the nigerian people are entitled to freedom of expression and freedom of protest all right, Alesta, let me come back to you. The PDP yes. is accusing, now what you were somewhat uh, alleging that um, all of the problems that we're facing today in Nigeria were caused uh, or really emanated under the PDP. Now the PDP is saying, uh, or rather have accused Mr. President um, of um, causing state and geopolitical zones to resort to self-determination um, and protection. Um, and he also, the, the, I want to understand, have Nigerians really resorted to that? I mean, apart from the fact that we know that there's been uh, the case of Namdi Kalu and, you know, the IPOB issue. And then, of course, recently states and some of their monarchs are saying that they're going to resort to protecting themselves because of government's silence over the issue that's been happening in the southwest, uh, herders versus um, the farmers. What exactly... Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't get the question. Can it? Can you just be more explicit? All right. So the you 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 made mention initially that the PDP, uh, most of the issues that the country is facing today happened under the PDP. Now the PDP is saying that the 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 way the presidency is dealing with the issue of insecurity, uh, it has made geopolitical zones resort to self determination and okay, self protection. Okay, okay. So I want you to talk about that. And do okay. you do you think that there might be a way uh, or there might be in the future uh, people beginning to take laws into their hands, especially with what happened in Shasha over the weekend? I have always said it. There is a lot of politics being played. Last time I said it, you, you attacked me. There are a lot of politics being played with certain issues. For instance, let's say IPOP. The owner, the, 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 the mastermind of IPOP was the same person that was campaigning for one Nigeria and campaign against Boko Haram in London in 2012 when Jonathan was president of this country. The same IPOP members were campaigning for and against the, 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 the security situation in the country and in support of the nation being together as one individual entity. But what happened? 2015, the, the moment this government came to power, 
I put the members that they were marginalized, they need to go there. Are you not seeing policies in it? Now, talking about other insecurity, uh, uh, issues of insecurity, I agree with you. It's a problem. And if anybody is saying that the headers farmers crisis started yesterday, then it's, it then he has, then it's been economical with the truth and it's present to the right history. The problem of headers farmers has always been there before you were born, before I was born. So long as there's going to be a movement or a clash of resources, there will always be conflict. Now, how do you manage it is the issue. But the unfortunate thing now is that the press, led by, led by your, your constituency, is expanding this problem. Look at what happened in Shasha. I, I grew up, I live in Ibadan, I've lived in Ibadan for about 20 years. I did my service there, I live there, and I'm, I still live in Ibadan. Shasha is a place that I know that has had a so much peaceful coexistence among the tribes. What happened in Shasha on Saturday? A disagreement between two traders, two traders that has nothing to do with elders, nothing to do with herdsmen, nothing to do with cattle. A disagreement between two traders, not even an Hausa or a Fulani, a Nigerian and a Yoruba woman created the problem in Shasha. And then is that the kind of thing that you like that, that, that we blame on somebody. But is that not a, a disagreement but, between Alaska, two Is that not also a result of the fact that we have kept quiet about certain <laughs> issues and not addressed no, them, and that's no, why no. I, people no, have I, taken. I, I a, I, I and I'm not in any that. way saying that um, what happened in Shasha was okay. I'm saying if governments have dealt decisively and head on with this issue, uh, whatever name we want to give it, would we be oh. having this kind of reprisal? Tribal conflict. Tribal conflict didn't start in Nigeria. Do you know when it is? Oh, do you know the tribal conflict? The Chibos, the What's Chibos happening in the, the southwest? In Can you call that a tribal conflict? What's it's happening in Ondo, in Ogu, in you know, your Is that a tribal conflict? What happened in Shasha in, on Saturday? Completely tribal. Has nothing to do. Tribal I, that we You didn't told. hear me. What happened in Ondo with the monarch screaming blue murder? And what happened in Ogu? Are you please, also going please, to whittle please, that please, down to please, some sort of tribal conflict? In Ondo, do you know who killed the man? Do you have, do you have evidence who killed it? Sorry, what did you say? Today, we ethnicize every crime. There are Fulani criminals and kidnappers. There are Yoruba criminals and kidnappers. There are Igbo criminals and, kid and kidnappers. But today, what do we have? We have ethnicized what uh, violent what crime. Should so what should and a country do? What should a country do to deal with the criminality? To, to, to punish. Uh, Alasta, what should a country ever. do if you're talking truth. about crime and criminality? What should be the response? For example, if there's a wave of crime from a certain group of people or hiding under the auspices of a certain group of people, it is what you, should a country it is you do? The press that is um, that, that, that is saying that segregation. What should Nigeria a country do? do? This before before 2015. When politics entered into, into a security issue... I'll ask the question one more time. If it exercise, is a crime and, and it's committed the, against the, the people of a constituency or a part of a country, what should the government or security agencies do? For example, we keep saying that these criminals are coming from outside the country. If you have criminals coming from outside the country to continuously perpetrate crime and the people of your country are at the receiving end of this. What should a good and a proper government do? I'll let you answer if, that question one more time. If the, if the PDP... Hello? Hello, can I go on? Yes, please. Yes, if the PDP is not a criminal, then the PDP can do Nigerians a good favor by exposing them. I mean, we are all in this together. Security is everybody's business. The PDP is if not PDP in charge of the country, are they? If they know the criminals, if they know those that killed the monarch, then they should expose them. And then if you expose them with concrete evidence and the police didn't do anything, then I would, I would be one of those I would stand with them. Interesting. They're not to sit in the cover of their zone and be making extraneous, extraneous uh, 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 publications that have no value. All right. Why is there no crime under the PDP? All right, all right, Alasta. I mean, when do you have the life of, uh, of, uh, of uh, this man? 
There's this man at the right that West. What's his name? All right. Don't know the Ale Alastair, I'm going to have to go back to Francis. You, you've had your say. Uh, I'm wondering how a political party who's not necessarily um, in charge of the leadership of the country would be the one to take on the job of security agencies. But finally, Francis, before we wrap this up, have, uh, do, you okay. think that, do you think that Nigerians have lost faith in the polity? Because this is what the PDP is saying to President Buhari's administration, that people are wary and they have lost faith in the polity under the president's watch. What's your take? Uh, well, I think, I think the truth of the matter is that um, Nigerians are not happy with the way the government has handled the issue of security, especially with banditry. Because um, all of a sudden, we have, um, we have looked at the issue of Boko Haram, we have looked at the issue of terrorism, and nobody is calling people what it should be called, which is people. Call all of that banditry, and now somebody is saying, sitting down somewhere, saying that we need to create or have amnesty given to bandits. Then we are being insincere and uncharitable to those who have lost their lives and livelihoods to this bandit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We gave amnesty to the Nigerian militants. Did we not give amnesty? If you are giving amnesty, we gave amnesty. 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 And they killed. What are the they killed and then they killed. How many? Alesta, 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 please. Can you let the man speak? You had your your turn, please. A headsman carrying a thing for And everybody, everybody is pretending that it is well. It is not well. It is not well. I, I, I few few weeks ago, an uncle of mine was traveling from Lagos to East in Atore. The vehicle was attacked by a headsman. Who came out of the bush, and unfortunately, he got his one of his hands caught. Um, caught. So these are real security issues. We call people what people eat. When we had the issue of the, the militants, they did not leave the the, the Greeks to go to come to, to the southeast or go to the north to create havoc. But we had a situation where even the governor of Kaduna State, Elufai, has condemned this act. He said for him that, what are we giving the super money for? What are you giving amnesty for? What have, they, what have we done to them that we are giving them amnesty? Well, so when something is wrong, then children are saying this is wrong. Like I said, CDP might not have the moral justification, but what they are saying is the truth. And okay. Nigerians have lost faith in this government. All right. Whether we like it or not, there are no pretensions about it. Well, I want to thank you very much, Francis Chilaka uh, and uh, Alester Wilcox, a Bolse political analyst. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Can I say this in closing? We need to go now. Well, um, we'll take a short break, and when we return, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, is back in the news, and this time has demanded the immediate cancellation of the ongoing All Progressive Congress APC membership registration in Kwara State for non compliance with the party's regulations and guidelines. Stay with us. We'll return.